Hello world and welcome back to another blood magic tutorial where for you it could be the first one in the series. Now there has been a little bit of an update when it comes to blood magic in the very beginning for 1.16. So we are going to be playing just for 1.16 today in the last tutorial it was for 1.12 and 1.16 but now things have changed so we have to go back to our roots and start all over again. Now, before we start, I'd just like to say if this video helps you out in any way, shape or form, please leave a like and subscribe. It will really, really help me out and maybe join the Discord. I'll also leave a link to that down in the description. Now, as I was saying, this is going to be for 1.16 only, which means that if you're following along in the series and you've been watching for 1.12, this will not apply to you, especially if you're just starting. This is completely changed and it's only for 1.16. Now, the first thing we're going to need is the Sanguine Sanctium. The Sanguine Sanctium is essentially the guidebook for the mod pack however I have a lot of comments saying oh I can't make the book it's because you need another mod so you need the blood magic mod for whatever version in 1.16 and then you also need the patcholi mod this mod will give you the API required to actually craft the book in the game so you must find this mod first I will leave a link down to that in the description then to make the book itself, it's going to require one book and one glass, and that is it. Here we go, we now have the book. Now, this looks a little bit different from what we had seen in the first basic tutorial. We have a few extra tabs now. Now, we're not going to flick through them all, of course. A lot of things are still the same when it comes to later versions. So, in, in the later tutorials that I've already put out, everything is still the same as far as I am aware. It's just the very, very beginnings that has changed. Now, usually you would have to find will first, but they've changed it. Instead, you can now go straight into making the blood altar. Now, in order to make the blood altar, you need four stone, or you could be actually diorite or andesite, but it, it can't be cobblestone, it has to be stone. Uh, one furnace and three gold on the bottom. That will give us our blood altar. There we go, we've got a few extra blood altars here. So, with the blood altar, you also need a way of filling it. Now, to fill it, you are going to need the sacrificial knife. That is going to require, obviously, five glass, one gold, and one iron. So, we'll get that right from in here. Now, in order, to, so what we'll do, we'll place down our blood altar that we have here. This is completely empty. You see, I'll break it. I'll place another one. Here we go. We have a completely empty, brand new blood altar. Now, if we go into survival mode here, once we're in survival mode, you see we're full health and hearts. Now, if we actually go into normal mode, just so we'll see our hearts and our health go down, when we right click, it will fill a little bit. Now, it shows we've only taken half a heart, but that's because we've regenerated a little bit, but we've actually taken a full heart. Every time we right click with this knife in our hand, it will take one heart away and put 200 blood, or life points as it's called in this game, into the blood altar. Now, you see, the blood has somehow disappeared. And the reason this has disappeared is because that there is an internal buffer inside of the blood altar. Now this internal buffer, don't worry about it, it's for uh, something we're going to show off later. And it's basically a way of in having the liquid inside this blood interact with other mods, say with pipes or tanks. So we don't want to worry about that for now. But the internal buffer can be filled up. So we're back in creative now. If we continuously spam right click, you will see that it is going to go down slowly, but it will stop eventually. Don't worry about that. I don't know how big the internal buffer is itself. I think it's around about a thousand life points, but eventually it will stop going down and this will fill up. Now, the blood altar itself can hold 10,000 life points, which is a lot that we're going to use to actually craft some of these items. So, there are we want to make all three of these things right off the bat. The first thing is going to be the weak blood orb. Now the weak blood orb is going to cost 2000 life points in total. So it's probably best to just keep this full because at the moment we don't actually know how much is in here. We know it can hold 10,000 at maximum. So when it's full, we know that we're in a good place. So if we get a diamond here, right click it on here, you'll see we'll start getting some particle effects. And what it will do is it will start using up this blood as you can see, the blood level is now slowly going down until eventually we get to the blood orb. Alright, there we go. The blood orb has just changed. We right click to pick it back up. And then if we mouse over it, you see that it says weak blood orb stores life essence. Life essence is basically blood that you can almost transport around with you. It's almost like a battery for blood magic. And it, it holds power, which we can use with other parts of the mod. 
However, if as you can see, it's currently unclaimed. If we right click with it, it will now say current owner Mondays 3. This is now ours. To do a lot of crafts in this, you have to have it owned by you. So make sure you right click at least once in the air whilst holding the blood orb. And that will take a little bit of damage away from you the same way as a sacrificial knife we're in creative mode so you can't tell but every time you right click with this it is actually going to take away one heart and another 200 life points but this time instead of going into your blood altar it will go into your soul network i.e inside your blood orb as sort of a battery Next, we're going to make a, um, a blank slate here. That is going to require one stone and 1,000 life points. So we'll throw that on there. It will start doing the craft. It will give us one blank slate. Blank slate is basically just a tiered-based item used for other crafts. We're going to use it later on in this mod pack. Uh, in this mod, sorry, not mod pack. There you go. It's already changed. And this can actually be upgraded to different levels, but we'll go to that later. And the last thing, and this is brand new to 1.16, is in order to make snares, you have to do it now in the blood altar. It's just going to require one string, so it's a lot cheaper than it used to be. It used to require iron as well, and only 500 life points. We throw that on here as well, it will start sucking up 500 life points, and this will only give us one snare. So you're going to actually need quite a few of these. It's up to you how many you make. I would recommend starting off with maybe, I don't know, 10 or 12, as it's going to be useful later on in the mod where we start getting into the sort of let's say demon side of blood magic anyway before we get into that demon side of blood magic we want to start getting other basic resources and basic things with that we need to craft when we're using blood magic the first of which is going to be the alchemy table now the alchemy table is going to require three stone two planks the planks can be of any different kind of wood but i believe they do have the match uh, one iron, two gold, and a blank slate, which we just made on the blood altar. So we put that in here, and we have an alchemy table. Now, the alchemy table is two blocks, and it works the same way as a bed. So it will place straight ahead of you. So if you place this here, as you can see, it's straight. So if you want it against the wall, you've got to do it to the side and place it this way. And then you can see it's looking towards us at the moment. Now, the alchemy table has had a bit of an upgrade with its UI, but for now, we're just going to focus on one craft, and this craft is to create the arcane ashes. Arcane ashes are another tool which can be used to make to either craft other things or actually give us certain buffs or or um, abilities. So it can give us fast jump, maybe run a bit faster, uh, or just basically craft things. So as you can see, I've got six spaces here, as there's six spaces in the inventory. Now, in order to make the arcane ashes, you're going to need one redstone, one white dye, one coal, and one gunpowder. Now, these can go in any single spot you want around this edge. It does not matter where it is. The inside part is where your item is going to actually end up fully. And up here is where your blood orb is going to go. So you've got your blood orb here. You've you've pressed your right click a couple of times, filled it up a little bit. And then when you place it in here, you'll see the progress bar will start ticking upwards now by the time this craft is finished it will use 500 life points out of your blood orb to finish the craft and there we go we now have some arcane ashes now a little bit more about the alchemy table here we have on the sides six buttons these stand for down up north south east and west now when if you press f3 you can see which way you're facing where depending on where you're looking so if i press e here you see here it says facing north so that's north that's east south and west so that is basically for all the different directions on the block so that would be the north side of the block east side of the block south side of the block and west side of the block and then up would be the top and down would be the underneath now this is used for when you're basically maybe putting hoppers on it or another mod you can put pipes and stuff so what you can do is you can select an area and then once you select an area this is where you want things to come in and out so there you go you now want to have, say it comes in from the northwest you can have maybe every single side it will put things in this slot you know that's how we do it so i believe blue means it's deselected red means it is selected so most likely people would say down they want the underneath to be the export so you say you put a hopper on here and a chest under here you can put the hopper and it will go into there then maybe you want the top uh, over here you want this one to be north this one to be south this one to be west this one to be east and so on and so forth 
Now, as this has got two sides on, as it's two blocks wide, what you could have, depending on which way you face it, in our case, you could have two on east, which means on the east side, meaning this side where the wall is, you could have maybe these two, maybe these ones. You could have this being east, this one being east, and everything else deselected. That way, every time you want to pipe things in from this side, it will put it in the east section. Now, uh, I'm sure you've played with many other mods in the past. You're probably playing in a mod pack, so you know how all that works. Maybe if you're playing with thermal dynamics or any other type of mod, maybe like mechanism. So we won't go too much more into that. But that's basically how the alchemy table works. The alchemy table does have many, many crafts. Some require six, all six spots. Um, but we'll leave that to that. I believe you can also set, yes, the blood orb you can also set as well. Moving on, let's actually use one of these arcane ashes. Now, what we're going to make is a sigil. Now, this is the only sigil we're going to go on in this video today. I have already made a sigils video about every single video of every single sigil that is in the mod, both for 1.12 and 1.16. So I highly recommend you go check that out. I'll leave a button up in the card now for you. Now, to make the sigil of the divination sigil, sorry, we are going to need two things. One is redstone and one is a blank slate. Now, if we have our arcane ash in our hands and right click on the floor, you see we've put down a symbol. Now, in order to change it to a different type of arcane symbol, you're going to need to place down a certain item. We are going to be using it for crafting, so we're going to place our first crafting ingredient down first, which is going to be redstone dust. So we right click on this symbol here, and now it's changed to a crafting symbol. Now, in order to change it into something else, you're going to need a catalyst. In this case, the catalyst is going to be a blank slate. So we place that on there. We're going to give us a little bit of an animation, and what it's going to throw out just into the open is one of these divination sigils. So it shrinks in and pop, there we go. We now have a divination sigil. Now the divination sigil is one of the many, many tools you're going to use in this mod pack. Now for the basic reason, it can do two things. If we go over to our blood altar here, we can now see a couple of things in the top left hand corner. The first one is being what tier the blood altar is. Now in 1.16, the blood altar can go all the way up to tier five, although nothing in tier five has currently been implemented into the mod. If you are watching this for whatever reason in 1.12, it actually goes up to tier 6. What you can also see is how much blood or life points is actually in the blood altar itself. So at the moment we have 6,500 blood out of 10,000. And if we right click with the sacrificial altar, you see it's gone up 200 points, as I said earlier. Another thing it can do is actually tell you how much blood is in your weak blood orb. So if I right click here, you can see I currently have 2,318 life points. Now, if I spam the right click, I believe the, the weak blood orb can go up to a maximum of 5,000 life points. There you go. You can see I'm still right clicking and it doesn't go any further than 5,000, which isn't actually a lot. So if you were one to create other sigils, sigils use current essence in your blood orb as a power source so that's why you need a lot of life points in order to actually do anything with sigils which is why we just want to do the divination sigil as it doesn't actually cost anything so let's move on to the second half of blood magic we've gone over a bit of the blood side of things now let's go over the will side of things now in order to get will what you're first going to need is those snares that we created earlier now in order to use these snares, first let's get into easy mode. Now, we are going to use here just ordinary zombies to begin with. Now, when we actually spawn these into the world, we'll just have them in here. What we need to use are these snares. Now, you can get 16 in a snack, and what we do, if we throw them at a zombie, you'll see that they can start getting these white particles. It's not always going to be first time, but if you get very lucky, you could get very lucky. Now, you can kill them with any sword, so we'll just kill them very quickly. We just try and get that one back there. I seem to be killing every single one except the one I want. Literally. Right, it doesn't seem like anything actually dropped right there. So let's throw another one at this fella and see if he gets what we want. Right, he's now glowing white. Let's kill him. And there you go. You can see it's dropped a will. So to clear the inventory, pick this up. It's an actual item in our inventory, Demon Will. And this has got a quality of 3.17. Now, what this means is that that is how much will is stored within this one demon will. Now, when it comes to using the snares and killing a enemy, it can go from anywhere between 0 0.1 
all the way up to five will in quality. And this is basically another power source. With the blood side of things, you're using life points or blood. In the will demonic side of things, you are using will as your power. So now we've got one will. Now we need a tool or another block in order to actually use this will. And this is going to be the Hellfire Forge. Now in order to create the Hellfire Forge you're going to need four stone, one block of iron, two regular ingots of iron and one blank slate which you make on the blood altar over there. And this will give us one Hellfire Forge. Now inside the Hellfire Forge you see that we have a, another sort of UI similar to the alchemy table over there. Now the first thing we're going to want to actually make is a petty tartaric gem now these tartaric gems are very similar to a blood orb as they can store will that is dropped by mobs so in order to create a will we're going to need some redstone we're going to need some gold we're going to need some glass and some lapis now if we don't have to put them in this order but just for this sake i'm going to we'll put that in there like that and we can put in one will into here so you can see nothing's happening right now we put our will in here that we've just created and the progress bar will start going away and you'll see that it uses one whole will in order to create an empty tartaric gem now i had some in here spare left over just for demonstration purpose earlier so here we have one petty tartaric gem now i recommend that you make two of these as one of them is going to be created to make our first tool actual weapon in blood magic and this is going to be a sentient sword now the sentient sword is using one of these tartaric gems and an iron sword so we've got an iron sword in here we put this empty one in here and you can see it already starts working as this is completely free craft you don't need any will for this at all now in 1.16 before you still needed to put some sort of will in there or maybe a, another tartaric gem with a bit of will inside of it but they've changed it now so you can just do it with the sentient sword now, the Sension Sword isn't the only Sension tool that is in the game. There are also Sension Pickaxe, Shovel, Axe and Hoe, but it's called a Scythe. But today we're just going to be going over the Sension Sword. So the way the Sension Sword works is it's essentially a more powerful sword than the Iron Sword, as you probably will be at this level. You might have Diamond Sword, but this can be more powerful than Diamond, even more powerful than Netherite. As how it works is the more will you have stored in your petty tartaric gem the more power you'll get out of the ascension sword so you can activate the sword but at the moment we don't have any will if we get this this one's full we can now right click to activate it we now have this blue sort of aura around it now i don't believe you can actually turn it off once it's activated it's activated but it doesn't start ticking down your will so you see this holds 64 will the petty tartaric gem can hold a maximum of 64 will and there are higher tartaric gem levels which can hold more but we're going to stick with just the one for now so when we go in here we can see that we are on peaceful mode <laughs> When we can see we have our petty tartaric gem here, we can throw this in here and we can kill this enemy. Now he does drop a bit of will. Now here, the reason he drops some will is because this is already full. But, and when we pick this up, it does actually still get sucked into our tartaric gem. You see, we don't have the item. So when you first start off, this is going to be empty. You will be able to kill enemies with this sword and automatically pick up all the wheels in the tartaric gem so this stops the need for using snares doesn't waste your blood magic doesn't waste your string but something to note you can't repair the ascension stored at this level in time later on in the mod you can actually create rituals and these rituals and how you actually find the means to repair these sentient tools we've already done a tutorial on this so i'll leave a link to that in the cards up above as well as in the description now the last thing I want to show is an upgraded tartaric gem. This is going to be the lesser tartaric gem. Now this also requires the petty tartaric gem in order to craft, as well as a diamond, block of lapis, and a block of redstone. And it's also going to require 20 will in total in order to craft. Now something that's interesting in here, you see that this is a completely empty tartaric gem, and nothing is happening. If we place this in here, it will start working, and it will actually... It, does show it completes the craft but it won't take anything out as we've taken out our source here so this will take out 20 will so that will go down to 44 will but something you can do and this is a brand new update that i didn't know about if we take out this empty gem and put in a gem that's already filled with some will quality 
we can place that in there and it will use what is in the craft itself in order to power it. Now, as you can see, it's gone to 44 will. All that extra will that was left over in that tar track gem automatically gets placed into the new gem. Which you can see, it was at 64, now it's at 44, it costs 20 will to tar off, and now we have the lesser gem. Now the lesser gem is exactly the same as the petty, except now it can hold 256 will. Which means if you're now going to fight enemies with a full lesser gem, instead of a full petty gem, your sentient sword is going to be even more powerful now. Anyway, that's pretty much all we're going to show off about the demon's will side of things today. Next, we're going to go back on back onto the blood altar. And we're going to do this by going over to how we're going to create the blood altar tier 2. As remember, there are five different tiers in total. Now, for this, you're going to need your weak blood orb as well as a blank slate for that we created with our blood altar part 1 or tier 1. As well as that, we're going to need seven stone in total. And this will give us one rune. Now, when you actually take this craft, you'll see that we keep our blood orb with us. So you don't have to keep creating blood orbs over and over and over again. You can just use the same. You're going to still obviously need to make everything else. You're going to have to make a lot of blank runes as well as a lot of stone in order to create this. But by this point, you may even have silk touch. So that'll make things very, very easy. Now, in order to actually get to the tier two altar, you're going to need eight of these blank runes in total. Now here we've got a brand new blood altar over here, but you don't have to move the blood altar. You can just leave it where it is and create a little one layer down square of runes. Now you don't have to do it directly underneath where the blood altar is. This is now going to be tier 2. So if we get our divination sigil, we see it's tier 2. But something to note, you still only have 10,000 life points capacity. This can be increased, but it's not actually by tier. It is by runes. Now, this is obviously a blank rune as we just created. Now, there are other runes later on in the mod where you can actually increase the size of the blood orb. You replace these blank runes with capacity runes, but we're not going to be going over that today. Now, what are the things that you can create with a tier 2 altar? There are three main things. The first one is going to be a sword, a dagger, sorry, a dagger of sacrifice. This is going to require 3,000 life points and an iron sword on top of a tier 2 altar. Now, how the dagger of sacrifice works is it's very similar to the sacrificial knife. But instead of having to sacrifice yourself in your own hearts, you can use a mob. Now, depending on what the mob is depends on how much life points you're actually going to get into the altar. So here we have a completely empty altar right now, as you can see. Now, if I right click on this as it's brand new, you will see that the blood will start ticking down. Actually, it looks like I've already fixed it and made it so the internal buff is already sorted. So let's get this to a nice clean thousand there. There we go, a nice clean thousand. Now, what we can do is if we get our sacrificial daggle and our spawner for a sheep what we should get is 162 life points to kill the sheep now something to note when your mobs are in the area they have to be quite close they have to be with pretty much within the area of the blood altar itself you can't have it way out of here otherwise it won't work now you'll know it works when the sacrificial dagger will work with just one click so we have this sheep really close here we right click no sorry left click with this and it will kill in one shot obviously and here we now see oh it's actually gained a little bit more this time we've got 175 life points so it does seem to vary just a little bit but if we do it from over here you see it didn't do it in one click which means that it wasn't close enough to actually be sacrificed now, obviously, we can do this with zombies as well. I tested this earlier and managed to get it to 176 with the zombie kill. So if we throw this in here, he will stop burning because it's daytime. But then we'll slaughter him there. And this now goes up to 601. So we've got a big old increase. I think that was even a little bit more than 476. But as you can see, depending on the mod, whether it's hostile or not hostile, I think even if it's dependent of whether it's, you know, a creeper or a zombie, the more life points you can get. So something a lot of people do is they create a dark room above and have the zombies fall just right next to this blood altar so then they can repeatedly sacrifice all the enemies. Next what we'll go over is an upgraded 
blood orb. This is going to be the apprentice blood orb. This is going to require 5,000 life points this time and a redstone block. Now, I don't understand why they made the redstone block for tier 2 blood altar, as uh, I think the diamond is a little bit more valuable, in my opinion, than the redstone block. But, never mind, I'm not the developer. As I said, this is going to cost 5,000 life points, so make sure this is very, very full. Now, as you can see, this isn't full at the moment. So, if we place this on here, you can see the craft will start going. You can see in the top left-hand corner, it's ticking down rapidly. But something to note, if you start running out, if you lose your life points, or run out of life points this craft won't just stop it will start degressing so as you can see it'll start doing all these gray particles which means you're losing the effect and eventually it will stop so you want to keep this topped up so we don't have to have all 5,000 here straight away you just got to make sure that it's full enough and if you do run out it doesn't mean you have to start again you've lost all your life points but it what does mean you better top out quickly otherwise all those life points will be wasted so eventually this will change now into a blend an apprentice blood orb now this will work the exact same way as the weak blood orb as it won't be claimed when you first pick it up so what you need to do is once it's actually spawn uh spawned or crafted right click with it in your hand and then it will be claimed to you and then you can continue to use that for crafts say more blank runes now obviously well not obviously you can also use the blank apprentice blood orb sorry not the blank apprentice blood orb you can use the apprentice blood orb to craft these runes as well it doesn't matter what tier blood orb you have it can be used for all the same crafts now the apprentice blood orb has a little bit of a higher amount of life points that can be stored i believe it is twenty five thousand in total so i'm right clicking here we see we're now at nine thousand let's see is it going to be ten thousand or twenty five it does look like it's going to go all the way up to 25,000 life points, which is very, very handy. This is where you can start getting into a couple of sigils if you really would like to. There are sigils that allows you to place water or lava infinitely as well as picking them up. Uh, maybe there's some ones that you want to fly around. Uh, very, very powerful stuff. So here we are at 25,000. We keep right clicking and it hasn't increased. So 25,000 is the limit for the apprentice blood hole next you have a higher tier slate this is going to be for the reinforced slates that will require one blank slate and 2000 life points in order to create the reinforced slate now the reinforced slate is not the same as the weak blood orb as you can just use the blood orb in these other crafts the the reinforced slate will be used for very specific class crafts itself some of which are actually created in order to create our first runes in order to upgrade our altar not in tier but in functionability if that's a word so if we go around the corner here we'll see that we've now got the ability to make two new runes the first one is going to be the rune of self-sacrifice this is going to require the reinforced slate another blank rune so what you could do if you wanted to is to pick these up and use them in the craft two glowstone dust and four stone place that in here it will give you a rune of self sacrifice now the rune of self sacrifice what it will do will give you a 10 percent buff or it will give you a plus 10 percent additively to the blood altar per self sacrifice now what does that mean so as we know at the moment it will the blood altar using the sacrificial knife when you right click it will take one heart away and will give 200 life points into this blood altar now what i'm going to do is to make this a nice clean even number let's get this completely full and then create a bland new apprentice blood orb so here we have a clean 5000 and i've already placed down our self-sacrifice runes now as it says it's going to give us a 10 percent plus additively per rune placed down now it says 10 percent but it's worded a little bit badly as 10 percent of 200 is actually 20 life points and with eight of those that'll be 160 life points on top of the 200 which should give us 360 life points per heart however it seems to work in half hearts when it works with this as it only goes up for 10 percent of 100 I don't understand why it's done this, but it is doing this, which means every time we right click now, instead of us giving it 200, it's actually going to give us 280. It's a bit of a strange way of doing it, but that is how it works, unfortunately. So when it says 10% plus 10% additively per rune, you should just pretty much ignore the percentage. It gives you plus 10 per rune. 
It's a very strange way of wording it, but that is the way how it works. The other rune is the rune of sacrifice. Now this is going to require four stone again, but instead of two glowstone, it's going to require two gold as well as a blank rune in the center. I don't know why I've <laughs> I don't know why I've got a reinforced slate here. It should have a blank rune in the center and a reinforced slate to the top. This one well will give us a rune of sacrifice. Now the rune of sacrifice is the exact same as the rune of self-sacrifice, except it applies to the mobs, obviously. Now it's going to be the exact same thing. Ignore the percentage, even though it says percent in the book. It's really just plus 10 per rune. So if we did the same again, replaced all of these with the rune of sacrifice and then say it had a zombie here and axed him, it'll give us a percentage bonus of 10%, but I don't really know how it works. I don't know if it's out of 100, out of the maximum. It's a bit of a strange math. This is an alpha version of the mod. They may fix this in the future, but at the moment, this is the way it is. A couple of extra things I would just like to show. This blood altar can be interacted with with pipes. So for me, I'm going to be using mechanism here. So I'm going to place a tank down here. We're going to place down a tube. Now this configurator is configured to fluids. Now I can have this to be in either, there you go, fluids there. And I can make this to go onto push or pull. There you go. It's now pulling all that blood and putting it into a tank. This is just how these pipes work. Likewise, if I had this, back to just being straight and had this to be pull it would put the blood back inside so if you wanted to store extra amounts of blood you could have a large tank and then keep using the sacrifice and maybe afk just while holding right click and it'll automatically suck all that blood into a tank ready to use later on so there's now only one more item I would like to show off today, and that is the Intense Altar. This is going to require four stone, two cobblestone, one charcoal, must be charcoal, not regular coal, and a weak blood orb or higher in order to actually craft it. Now, in order to actually upgrade this Intense Altar, you're going to need something called Paths, and Paths are going to require your higher tier blood olds that come in the pack, or the mod, sorry. But we'll get to those later. As you can see, it's built like this. Now, as you may have noticed behind me, there is a massive structure. And I am going to let my previous self explain how this all works. And what it does is when we place it down, you'll see here that the you'll get some particle effects. And our sacrificial knife will go um, golden. So, using the divination sigil again and hovering over this, you'll see in the top left hand corner, we've got two new icons. The top one is Tranquility, and Tranquility is just like how calm your character is within the lore of Blood Magic. And the bottom one with the Knife Plus is essentially telling you a 25% increase on having each self-sacrifice. So this works in a 5x5 five five area, so if I was to just cut myself here, oh sorry, I have to cut myself in the bowl. If I cut myself here... It will then charge up again because I'm within five blocks of this. So one, two away, one, two away, and that'll be the five block area. Now, how this works, what we're going to do is we're going to reset this again as well. So it's clear. And these are, these are sacrifice. If I change these to self-sacrifice again, we'll see something very interesting. So if I hop back into survival mode here, how things work with this now sacrificial knife that's been upgraded with the incense, will one, get the 20% bonus from using this knife. But as well as that, we will take 90% of our hearts straight away. And if we stay within this area, we can continuously right click without any worry of actually harming ourselves. But if you have this a little bit further away, then it won't really work. But that will give us our 20% increase. Now, what it will do is just with the 20% alone, as well as these runes of self-sacrifice, you'll now get 336 life points per per heart of, of damage, which is a lot better than just doing anything without it. So it's definitely worth getting these, even if it's basic. Now, obviously, this takes 90% of your hearts. Now, you probably won't have these extra two hearts with your version of the mod pack, or you might. But for basically per right click with just having 10 hearts, this and eight self-sacrifice runes, you'll actually get 3,024 life points per right click with this knife, which is a very good way of keeping this full. 
But besides that, we're going to talk a little bit more about the incense altar. So I'm going to go back into creative mode here. Now, the incense altar is obviously a multi block structure, as I said. And first things first, you need to really understand is if we get a couple of items here, we need cobblestone just as a base because this how this works is it works in a maximum square of nine by nine. And at this level, you're only going to be able to get up to a three by three square, but that's OK. I'll demonstrate the entire thing anyway. So how this works is if you think about every area outside of this cobblestone area as a ring. So every everywhere around. So this is a ring. This is a ring, another ring, another ring, another ring, and so on and so forth. And the way you can expand the range of tranquility with this is by using paths. So to begin with, you only have access to one type of path. But if we type this in path inside here, you'll we'll see we have wooden path. Now that's what you can do to begin with. Then you have stone path, worn stone path, and obsidian. So the further you go, the easier it is. So obviously with the uh, obsidian path, it's not telling me how to make it. There you go. With the wooden path, it requires up. You need the minimum of the apprentice blog orb. And that's why you can't do it with the weak, which is why I'm showing it here. For stone, you can use the Magician's Blood Orb, which is one level up, so that we need a tier 3 altar. Then for Worn, we need the Master Blood Orb, which is the final tier. Now, there is the Obsidian Path, but in 1.16, the Obsidian Path hasn't actually been implemented, but in version 1.12 and below, it has been. Um, and it does say inside the book, if we go into here, what the bonuses actually are. So if we go back to the beginning, we go to the incense altar and it will explain a little bit more how this works. So here it will show us all the paths. Now, if you're playing in 1.12, it actually doesn't show this in the book, but in here it will tell us the percentages. So no path gives us 20% as we've seen. Wooden path, 60% and it works three rings out. Stone path gives us 120% for maximum five path rings out. Worn stone path is 200% and that's for seven rings out. And obsidian path is 300% for the maximum of nine rings out. Now, as you can see, obsidian, obsidian is not yet implemented into this version of the pack, but that's okay. If you're playing 1.12, it's fine. Now, once you actually reach obsidian, you can make all of it obsidian if you want for it to look nice. So this can all be replaced for the maximum version but it's up to, up to you. To begin with, you could, you'll only have wood as it is. So if we get some wooden path here, and you'll have to do this in all four cardinal directions. So if we go up to here and create our lovely path, this will unlock three rings for us. Now, to note, in order to increase tranquility, you need a certain, certain blocks. Now it says in here what those blocks actually are. Basically there are different elements. So as you can see here, tranquilities have got different elements. We've got uh, netherrack, dirt, lava, water, life essence, life essence being the blood, farmland, wheat, nether warp, beetroot, leaves, logs, fire, grass, loads of different things. So at the moment we've got grass as our rings because we're in our super flat world. So if we hover over with our divination ritual, you see we now have 424 tranquility with a 48% increase with each right click of this. So if we actually got rid of some of this dirt here, it should actually go down. You see it's now at 44%. Now to note, if you are using the exact same item every single time, or every single ring, you'll actually get diminishing returns. So it's best to have things all on different types. So if we say get a hoe here, get a hoe first, we'll get some uh, water, and lastly, some seeds. This is probably the best thing you can do. Not seeds, seeds. There we go. So if we say water being the outside, this will be one ring for us. And then if we do farmland being the next, which is simply just nothing on it. So this is probably the easiest way to do base. And then lastly, if we have wheat in the center. Hey, look, I actually got an achievement for that as well. And let's also get some bone meal to increase the size of this. Right here, if we make this wheat here, lovely stuff. We will now, before it was at 48, now it's at 60, just from changing things up here. 
and obviously the with the crops now i know it says beetroot and stuff in earlier versions of the pack it's crops as a whole so if you used potatoes as the next row you'll still get diminishing returns because it's classed as a crop as wheat is but farmland and wheat they are different apparently it's very very strange but I, I will build up this entire thing to its max size and I'll give you a look at what you could actually end up with. So I've built a entire 9x9. Obviously in 1.16 the obsidian levels won't actually work. But this is every different type of essence that you could use in order to make this incense altar the maximum it could be. Now it doesn't have to be in this order. You can be in whatever order you want. But this is the basic idea. So I've got a brand new altar over there. And obviously we're going to go in. We're going to go in and give ourselves a lovely cut. And I'll put myself in so you Vival mode here now if we throw this in here bosh look filled the entire thing up in one now obviously this is just the base level obviously we can probably fit even more in here but as you can see because of the instance isn't so close anymore we can't continuously right click like we were before so how do we get around that well I have built if I get out of that lava <laughs> if I get out of here and fill this up again there you go. I'll go round. As you can see, incense altars can actually be turned into upside down pyramids. So what I've done is I've built a level 5 altar here. Now like obviously in other versions you can actually get level 6, but in this is level 5. But you'd never need it in 16, 1.16 because there isn't a lot of le uh, level 5 implementation. And then up there, I've used all the exact same materials. It's in a slightly different order, but I've used all the exact same materials to make an upside down altar as you can see here because as long as the rings are on the same level as the path the path can go anywhere and it doesn't have to be an exact pyramid like there could be a gap here as long as long as um if i get some of this out the only rules is say our incense altar is here and we have a path here as long as all the rings are on the same level it counts so if i had this like this it would count if i had this like Yeah, if I had this like this, it would count. If I had this like that, it would count. The only rule is that the next row has to be within a five block vertically of the previous ring. That's all it is. So you could have it completely like zigzagged out for nine blocks. So you could have it going straight up or having it straight down. You can do whatever you want here as long as it's within five blocks now as it shows here so it's flat and flat and flat and the purple block represents everything on the same level so you see you can zigzag we can go straight up or straight down it's pretty cool how it works but as we have here we've got different levels so now if i go into here let's make this a brand new one and if we right click with this, it builds up again. Oh, let's actually go into survival mode and do that again, actually. And actually get 10 hearts again. I'll do it at 10 hearts to get a maximum effect. And smash. We're fully full again. And you can see we are at full health again, repeatedly, because the instance altar is right underneath here. So we don't have to worry about uh, right clicking too much and killing ourselves. Now you can probably do you can do this in any order you want. Obviously, if you're using fluids and you're stepping, you're gonna have to have them on the same level, which is why I've done this level being flat and this level being flat. And you can obviously beautify this. I mean, maybe in order to have it all look nice, you might have uh, all the lava coming down. Maybe that might look cool to you. There you go. You'll have something like this maybe, if that takes your fancy. Have it going all around. Obviously, you might have to like fill this up with the glass or maybe do lava spire, but this is basically it. And the last thing for the future, if you end up going ahead and we get these capacities, we're going to use the augmented capacities. I'm going to fill in the rest of these with capacity ones and see how much we actually get from one simple sacrifice here. Right. I have now created and changed these all into augments and I want to do this with just 10 blocks or 10 hearts to see how much we fill here. Bosh. 
So it didn't even fill this whole thing, but we can hold 132,000. That one cut with a full um, incense gave us about 135, no, 13,500 blood in just one shot. And that's with a full upgraded incense altar and only still eight rings of sacrifice so you'd be good f up until tier 10 if uh, tier 5 if you went full on straight away now i think you can only get up to here to begin with on this version that you can get if we're at tier 3 you can then get stone so you can only go five blocks out to begin with anyway um but it's good to plan ahead try and put your altar in at where it's going to be first otherwise you end up going into the ground but guys this is going to be the end of the tutorial if this tutorial helped you in any way shape or form if you if you could consider leaving a like and subscribe it really helps me out and join the join the discord i have a link down in the description we love chatting in there it's a growing community we're up to nearly 40 members now it's insane and i'd love to see some people from youtube in in amongst it as well anyway guys i'll see you in the next one take care